my heart aches, and a drowsy numbness pains my sense, as though of hemlock I had drunk, or emptied some dull opiate to the drains one minute past, and leftwards had sunk. Tis not through envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou, light-winged dryad of the trees, in some melodious plot of beech and green, and shadows numberless, sing of summer in full-throated ease. Oh, for a draught of vintage, that have been cooled a long age in the deep-delved earth, tasting of flora and the country green, dance and provincial song, and sunburnt mirth. Oh, for a beaker full of the warm south, full of the true, the blushful hypocrisy, with beaded bubbles winking at the brim, and purple-stained mouth, that I might drink and leave the world unseen, and with thee fade away into the forest dim. Fade far away, dissolve, and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known, the weariness, the fever, and the threat here, where men sit and hear each other groan, where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs, where youth grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is of to be full of sorrow and leaden-eyed despairs, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. Away, away, for I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his pards, but on the viewless wings of poesy. Though the dull brain perplexes and retards, already with thee tender is the night, and haply the queen moon is on her throne, clustered around by all her starry fays. But here there is no light, save what from heaven is with the breezes blown through verdurous glooms and winding mossy ways. I cannot see what flowers are at my feet, nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs. But in embalmed darkness, guess each sweet wherewith the seasonable month endows the grass, the thicket and the fruit tree wild, white hawthorn, and the pastoral eglantine. Fast fading violets covered up in leaves, and mid-May's eldest child, the coming musk rose, full of dewy wine, the murmurous haunt of flies on summer eaves. Darkling I listen, and, for many a time, I have been half in love with easeful death, called him soft names in many amused rhyme, to take into the air my quiet breath. Now more than ever seems it rich to die, to cease upon the midnight with no pain, while thou art pouring forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy, still wouldst thou sing, and I have ears in vain, to thy high requiem born a sod. Thou was not born for death, immortal bird. No hungry generations tread thee down. The voice I hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperor and clown. Perhaps the selfsame song that found a path through the sad heart of Ruth when, sick for home, she stood in tears amid the alien corn. The same that oft times hath charmed magic casements, opening on the foam of perilous seas, in fairy lands forlorn. Forlorn, the very word is like a bell, to toll me back from thee to my soul self. Adieu, the fancy cannot cheat so well, as she is famed to do, deceiving elf. Adieu, adieu. Thy plaintive anthem fades past the near meadows, over the still stream, up the hillside, 
and now tis buried deep in the next valley glades. Was it a vision, or a waking dream, fled that is music? Do I wake or sleep? Ode to a Nightingale, written by John Keats, narrated by Jordan Harling.